I am to inherit the Iron Throne. She will block my way. Our hearts remain as one. Oh, our hearts were never one. Have you never imagined yourself on the Iron Throne? Where is duty? Where is sacrifice? Welcome back, everyone. This will be my new House of the Dragon trailer video for the extended trailer that they released at the Comic-Con panel. It was private before, but now they finally released it online. They've included a bunch of extra scenes, a bunch of extra context, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, I will be doing videos for all the episodes, just like I did for the Game of Thrones main series. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'm also going to the premiere this week, and they're going to be screening the first episode, so I'll post a non-spoilery video the day after that happens. It sounds like they're going with a lot of the same vibe as the early seasons of Game of Thrones, particularly season one and season two, where you have a lot of character drama with like a couple really big WTF battles. The big WTF battle, it seems like they're showing most of the footage from, I think is the Battle of the Stepstones, which was against the Triarchy, this big force from Essos. One of the big trailer scenes that you see later where Daemon Targaryen is wearing a crown in his head is basically him crowning himself King of the Stepstones after that battle. Like he comes back thinking himself a king, trying to present himself like a conqueror, but obviously Graham McTavish as Harold Westerling here, who's Lord Commander of the King's Guard during this period, wants nothing to do with it because he literally pulls his sword on him as he approaches his brother Viserys I on the throne. The opening scene of this extended trailer is a stark contrast to that because it takes place in the past because it's a young version of Rhaenyra coming to see a younger version of Daemon who's sitting on the Iron Throne. We saw a version of this scene earlier, but you get a little extra context here because Harold Westerling earlier in the timeline opens the door for her and it seems like it's supposed to be some kind of secret meeting where he gives her that pendant that you see her wearing around her neck later in the timeline when she's much older. Clearly, if he doesn't have a problem with Daemon Targaryen sitting on the Iron Throne earlier in the timeline, something has changed that makes him hate him a little bit more later in the timeline. This is just meant to show off some of the power dynamics between the characters, like obviously he sees himself as his brother's successor to the Iron Throne, and she hasn't really thought too much about it yet. But then eventually she's named the successor, so he's trying to find another path to the Iron Throne, and eventually they do get remarried later in the timeline when they're much older. That's what this scene is here, where you see their hands bleeding and clasped together. You also see her taking her dress off here with them getting ready to get it on. When King Viserys is talking to the younger version of his daughter, Rhaenyra, about this dream that he had about all the dragons roaring, obviously it's meant to be a metaphor about the coming Targaryen civil war with all the different Targaryens yelling at each other. All of their different dragons that they ride yelling at each other, there'll be 17 dragons during the show. There's some extra scenes that clearly show that it's her riding through the woods and riding with her is a younger version of Kristen Cole. You see the firelight scenes of her talking to Kristen Cole. It's from that same part of the episode. She's talking to him, wondering if the people of Westeros, the other lords, will ever accept her as their leader, obviously foreshadowing the coming Dance of the Dragons. But also what's going on here is that as a young girl, she actually had a big crush on him, but he didn't reciprocate her feelings. It leads to things getting kind of messy, like it's kind of a Jamie Brienne situation. The other really notable thing about the dragons that I didn't talk about in the previous trailer is there was some footage of a mystery dragon's foot that was way bigger than the other dragons. That was probably Vagar. He's meant to be like the biggest dragon that's alive during this period of the timeline after the death of Balerion the Black Dread. What's happening here later in the timeline is you have a young version of Aemond One-Eye Targaryen. He's the person that has the eye patch later in the timeline. He's trying to restore his honor by becoming Vagar's next rider because he is the biggest dragon. So when he's successful, everyone thinks it's a really big deal. The very simple reason why he's bigger than a lot of the other dragons on the show is just because he's older and dragons just continue to grow and grow and grow. That was why Balerion the Black Dread got so big, why his skull's so big, because he's about 200 years old when he died. So the whole idea is that some of the dragons that you meet on the show were actually hatched by people way earlier in the timeline. Really good example is the Vagar dragon. His first rider who hatched him was Aegon the Conqueror's sister, Visenya. Then he was ridden by Balon Targaryen, who was the father of Viserys I, the current king, and Daemon Targaryen, his brother. But the really interesting thing is that after his father, Balon, dies and Viserys I is voted by the realm to become the next king, he does not take Vagar. He doesn't become a dragon rider either. Like, he doesn't ride any dragons during this period of the timeline. This is also the inside of the dragon pit that was created after Vagar was born. So like one of the ideas is the minute that they create the dragon pit and start raising dragons and they're all enclosed, they start to grow smaller and smaller and smaller and it starts to weaken Targaryen power and it's sort of like this ill omen for their family. 
And I know there's a big question about who that dragon is at the end of the trailers. It's the same dragon in both of the versions of the trailer. It could be a version of Rhaenyra's dragon, Cyrax, or it could be a version of Vagar. It's just kind of hard to tell because you don't see the entire dragon's head here. Sometime soon I'll do a bonus video about all 17 dragons on the show, who they are, who their writers are, and who hatched them. There's another brand new scene of younger Rhaenyra approaching her father while he's praying to the Skull of Beleriand the Black Dread and he talked to her about how the Iron Throne is the dangerous place on Earth. He's not wrong about that. Not only does everybody want the Iron Throne, so everybody kind of wants your blood, but also the Iron Throne itself is made from thousands of swords and will literally cut you if you don't sit on it the right way. That's why when he's telling the story and he puts his hand on the Iron Throne, you see it bleeding. Although in the grand scheme of things, when people think about Viserys I Targaryen, people usually think about him as being kind of a weak king because of the way he waited so long to name a successor to the Iron Throne and the way that he did it. There are a couple scenes of younger Allison and younger Rhaenyra praying together to the Maiden. That's who this figure is. Zoom in enhance, you see in this scene, she's wearing the necklace that Daemon gave to her earlier. Like I said, that she's wearing it later in the timeline when she's much older. Like it stays with her this whole time. This is also just meant to tease that they were friends when she was at court, they were younger, before she got remarried to her father. Then a lot of people think that this person that wears the mask with the burnt face is actually a version of Crab Feeder. His real name is Kragas Drahar. He appeared in the earlier trailers. The reason why people called him Crab Feeder is because one of his go-to moves during big battles was to chain prisoners up in low tide so that the water would eventually come in and slowly drown them. Like that's a pretty brutal way to take someone out. So that when the tide came in and drowned them, they would become crab food. He was the crab feeder, very literally. The reason why he'd be wearing the mask, why his face is disfigured, is probably because it got burnt by dragon fire earlier in the timeline. There's a new scene of what seems like Daemon Targaryen's hand putting the cat's paws Valyrian dagger in fire to heat it up. What they explained is that they actually upgraded the prop. So the person who wrote the original article on it got a little bit confused. It is meant to be the same cat's paws dagger that Littlefinger used to start the War of the Five Kings and that Arya later used to kill the Night King. But what they've done for the House of the Dragon show is make it a little bit more accurate to real life daggers of that period. So the hilt is just like a little bit shorter and it's a little bit more detailed, like it holds up in 4K just a little bit better. Later in the trailer, you see an older version of Alicent try to pull it on older Rhaenyra, but you actually also get some context for how she gets the Valyrian dagger. She literally steals it off of her husband, the King Viserys Targaryen. Like she grabs it off of his belt, then pushes him to the ground, and then jumps at Rhaenyra with the dagger. We all kind of wondered where she got it from. This just confirms that the dagger belonged to Viserys before we saw it on the main show. It doesn't confirm who first owned the dagger, it just confirms that at some point he owned the dagger. Even though House of the Dragon is meant to take place 200 years ago during the height of Targaryen power, when they were like the most that the Targaryens would ever become in Westeros, when they had the most dragons, the most political power, the most military power, the most metaphorical power. Even during that period, Valyrian steel was incredibly rare and incredibly valuable. So it wasn't just like every single person and their sister was running around with a Valyrian blade. But there are some really cool ones that we see during the trailer, like obviously Daemon Targaryen wielding Dark Sister during a couple different scenes. And even though they really want you to focus on the cat's paws Valyrian dagger because it was such a big deal during the main show, the even bigger deal I think is them showing Viserys Targaryen wielding a version of Blackfire. That was Aegon the Conqueror's Valyrian blade and it was lost later in the timeline during the Blackfire rebellions. Speaking of Blackfire rebellions later in the timeline, they also confirmed what their grand plan is at HBO for doing other Game of Thrones series set during different parts of the timeline. So this is a really big deal. They said that even though House of the Dragon is only planned for like three or four seasons, what they'll do is they'll do other parts of the timeline and they'll still call them House of the Dragon and treat it like an anthology show. So like when we get to House of the Dragon season five, for instance, it'll be a different part of the timeline, different group of actors, and it'll be like the Blackfire Rebellions, or they'll go earlier in the timeline and do Aegon's Conquest, but it'll still be viewed as like House of the Dragon season five, for instance. If we get any more details about those other spinoff shows, of course I'll do videos about it. If you spotted any other Easter eggs in the brand new footage in this version of the trailer that I didn't talk about in either of my videos, just write it below in the comments, and I will post my non-spoilery review of episode one as soon as they let us this week. All my full House of the Dragon episode videos will start posting after they've released them. It's going to be crazy in the best possible way. I've got a bunch of other Comic-Con trailer videos that I'm working on. Make sure you enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of those. Everyone click here for my full Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer video in Easter eggs. And click here for my video on that alternate House of the Dragon trailer video with the different footage. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.